Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Ryan Rampersad so we can share our experiences with the second generation Chromecast. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO38. So Ryan, what is this Chromecast thing? It is something that you attach to your TV and then you play videos through it. Yeah. Whoa. And this this is the second generation one, of course, but like I, I believe that the first generation Chromecast was kind of the first of these like streaming stick. There had been Roku's previously. Yeah, that's true. There had been, you know, like the, you know, the original Apple TV, which is sort of more of like a box thing. Right. But, yeah. you know, it's kind of similar in that you interact with it kind of externally to your phone or, mm-hmm. your, uh, you know, your person. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. The big difference from like the Roku would be that the Roku has like a, a remote that you use with it usually. Right. right. Yeah. So this was really the first one, pretty much still kind of the only one that you don't have a physical interaction device with it. Right. We call that a remote, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So you just have this little uh, this little streaming device that plugs into the HDMI port on your television. It exists back there, but you never ever see it physically. And, and so this device is called a Chromecast, mm-hmm. but it's sort of misleading because it's also it's it's easily confused with the name of the protocol, which isn't Chromecast. It's Google Cast. Yes, the name of the protocol used to be Chromecast, but then they renamed it when they named the protocol Google Cast in the product Chromecast. Something, something. But it actually runs Android under the hood. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, yeah and, that's right. And, and then the first generation was in the shape of a stick. Uh-huh. So it should have been called the Chrome stick. Yeah, right. And then the second generation was a circle or a puck. Mm-hmm. should have been called the Chrome puck. Well, no, because the puck is the Nexus player. That was the hockey puck. Okay, Nexus disc player puck. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Please don't call it a disc, though, because that would imply that we're using DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So uh, this is the second generation one, mm-hmm. and we will talk about it. Yeah. It's been out for uh, a couple of years now, actually, um, but Google hasn't really come out with any other... Like, they've come out with the Ultra version. I think that... they came out with the Ultra at the same time as the second generation. Oh, did they? Okay. And it just launched a few weeks later in retail. Okay, yeah. Um, but they, like... The the base price for this device is still the same as when it launched, right? Which uh, I think speaks pretty well of the launch price. Like, right. So <laughs> it's it, it's again thirty five dollars. Um, one of the interesting things about that is that it's frequently on sale. So mm. this this previous holiday season in two thousand seventeen, yeah, it could be purchased for as low as uh, twenty five dollars. Okay. And sometimes even with a gift card. Mm-hmm. So you can get them pretty much anytime. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, now they, they do like, they do warrant a little bit of explanation on how you interact with them since they don't have that physical interaction device. They don't have a remote, right? Um, so the way that you like tell them what to play is you use usually your, your phone, possibly your computer, right? Yes. Um, to like go and find whatever media you want to put up on your television and then you click on a cast button, right? Which mm-hmm. looks like a little kind of rectangle with like some radio waves in front of it. Kind of looks like the RSS symbol. Uh, and then you know, it it doesn't it doesn't start playing from your device up to the television, right? It's not mirroring that video. It's just telling the Chromecast where to find that video. It's kind of like sending a URL to the TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then. Um, and then, and you know, whatever commands you tell it, like, okay, I want to scrub to, you know, this point in the video, right? It'll just, you do know, that. tell, yeah, Remotely. tell the Chromecast to do that. Um, you know what it kind of reminds me of, actually, is one of the really awesome features of Hangouts way back in the day. So this is back like... Back when Hangouts had features. Yeah, like, back when we were recording 8-bits, uh, you know, and, and we were using Chromecast as... or <laughs> We were using Hangouts as our platform for, you know, communicating with each other and everything. Um, we would use the YouTube app in mm-hmm. Hangouts a lot where anybody could go and add in videos to the uh to like the queue there and anybody could control playback of the video that we were watching and everybody would see the results of that right so we were always watching the video 
synchronously. Um, and that's kind of what the, the Chromecast is doing here is any anything that you do on your phone or on your computer, uh, that's going to tell the Chromecast what to play. Right. Yep. Now, one of the drawbacks of this approach is that the video platform that you're playing from has to support the Google Cast protocol, right? Um, because it's not playing the, de- the, the stuff that's on the device up to the television. Um, so the, the app itself has to support Chromecast. Mm-hmm. Um, and the on the video side of things, we have a little bit less cohesion on significantly less i'd say yeah yeah and and so this 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 lack lack of cohesion is due to you know all of the vendors sort of still trying to buy out who the winner is for video platform Mm -hmm. um and 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 i don't mean like who the winner in the video platform is in the sense of like youtube because we already know youtube won on that angle sure user created videos Yeah, yeah i mean more like movies and TV shows, so right. like you can kind of think big budget of, stuff, you know, like the the Netflixes and the Amazons mm-hmm. and the uh, whoever the others are. Yeah, yeah, and and so we're we're living in this world where we've got several different companies that uh, are doing not only content side of things, right? They are producing television shows and movies and stuff like that, but they also have hardware sides. Um, so you know, we've we have. Um, I guess Google isn't really doing content, but they do have like their own storefront, right? right. But they also have the Chromecast that is like their physical delivery mechanism mm-hmm. into the home. Um, Amazon has, you know, they have several original shows that they're producing. They also have the Fire Stick, right? Yep. Um, and so those two major players don't like playing with each other very well. Not at all. Um, and so you're not going to see any of Amazon's services available on the Chromecast. Uh, and likewise, you're not going to see like YouTube or uh, Google Play movies um, on the Fire Stick. Right? right. And so as far as it goes with not having Amazon and, and others on um, Chromecast, mm-hmm. you know, it, it Google, Google sort of allowed this and, and AirPlay with Apple also sort of allowed this that you have to opt in to the service. Mm-hmm. Um, Google could have made it so that anybody that wanted to play video using, you know, the video playing API on Android, right. just it just magically became available. Right. And they could just, it would be mirroring, it would be playing through the phone still, but it would be something that you can, at a system level, just beam to the TV. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not what they chose to do, and I will hold it against them. <laughs> on the other hand, like, do... Okay, so like the... Let's say I'm playing a video in the Vimeo app sure. on my Android device. Is that actually using like the video playing API or whatever that's built into Android? Because that video file isn't on the device. It's just streaming it from Vimeo. So I don't know servers. for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if there were some uh, video streaming APIs built into Android. Because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it's pretty popular. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I, I would imagine that most of those platforms don't want to go and like build their own homebrew solutions. So for example, if you go into your Android phone and you use Chrome mm-hmm. and you go to a website mm-hmm. that uses not their own special player right. for video, but the generic, I put a file here player, Yeah, you can Chromecast that to your Chromecast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I did notice, like we were doing that last night with the video from a small um, news outlet, you know, in, in central Iowa mm-hmm. who, who were running a, a little um, a little story about my family uh, <laughs> with our car crash. And um, they like we, we I, I cast it from within the web page up to our television and the audio and the video were not synchronized <laughs> correctly. Right. So I'm not sure if that's because this was a very bad news organization or if uh, it was the Chromecast fault. I, I would have to go and watch it again on my own phone. <laughs> so um, it's very infrequent that I have to resort to this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I used the Amazon app to watch Mr. Robot the first season. Sure. Yeah. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. Uh, the first season was on, was on the Amazon video app i don't know because mm-hmm, it was free on prime right and um since there was no chromecast but i wanted to watch it on my nice tv mm-hmm. um i had to mirror 
the show right. from my phone to the TV. <laughs> well, and I, I was lucky enough to have multiple phones at the time, so I did it on the other phone, and so I could use my normal phone, right? Um, like a normal phone, because when you're mirroring, everything on the screen is what you see, mm-hmm. so you don't. So I suppose you have to keep like the screen unlocked and, and on. on when you're mirroring. So I had mirroring. to have it plugged in. Interesting. It was awful. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Got to have multiple phones. It's at, real. at that point, I mean, you might as well just have like a a corded, you know, like solution for, you know, going from USB type C to HDMI, for example. If your phone supports it. Yeah, exactly. Nah. Mm, mine does not. Mm. What a shame. Yeah. One of the really awesome things that the Chromecasts do uh, is they support CEC. Which this is, is wonderful. This is, I love this. And, and, I didn't know that like TV manufacturers had built this into TVs until I got the Nexus player several years ago. Um, And uh, yeah, so basically when you start casting something to the Chromecast, the Chromecast will actually send a command to the television saying, hey, wake up. I'm doing something. Yeah. Turn yourself on if you're not already on. Switch inputs to me if it's not already on me. Uh, and it's, man, that is fantastic. It's pretty slick. Um, in some circles, uh, people will say this is awful. And why are rogue devices controlling my TV? They're just a bunch of whiners. Don't listen to them. <laughs> um, so, for example, if you have a Google Home, mm-hmm. what what episode can you listen to the Google Home show on? What? What what episode did we record about a Google Home? What was that? Oh, that was uh, uh thirty six. Yeah, so we we recent episodes of Second Opinion we did uh, the Google Home Mini and uh, the Chromecast Audio. So those are all kind of they're all related related to this one. So if you want to learn more about those as well, go and listen to the previous two episodes. So I can take my Google Home and I can ask it, show me pictures of my dog on living room. Mm-hmm. I have a Chromecast attached to my living room TV. Yep, and it will just show me pictures of my dog on the living room TV with Chrome. Cast. There you go. It's amazing. Yeah. And if the TV's not on, it'll turn it on. Mm-hmm. So it's great. Now, there are some things that you might wish for, though. So I don't know why this is the case, but CEC doesn't have hooks for turning the TV off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is <clears throat> very annoying because mm-hmm. if you're watching a YouTube video or you're you know watching Netflix or something, right. it should be smart enough to know, like, okay, the person fell asleep. Let's turn the TV off now. Sure. Not that smart. Or if I stop casting, then, like, maybe stop it sure. yeah um so that's another issue so if you have a tv that has usb mm-hmm. and some tvs have usb ports uh-huh. you can plug your chromecast into the usb port to provide them the power for it to work uh, yeah yeah but some tvs aren't super smart they're just eh, smart okay and they will uh, you know cut power to the usb port when the tv's off <laughs> which means cec won't work <laughs> through the chromecast because it's not power. oh that's funny so there are that's some funny. there are some quirks with the setup mm-hmm. um and you might not know going in so the recommendation is to always use the actual wall right. plug to to actually power the device i do have something to say about the wall plug um the chromecasts are powered via micro usb and they, they implement this in, like, the most basic way that you can imagine, right? They have just, like, a brick uh, that converts from, you know, alternating current to direct current or, yeah, or vice versa, whichever it is. It is. Uh, you know, they have a USB type A port on them. And then you get a cord that goes from full size A to micro USB type B. Mm-hmm. And that plugs into the Chromecast. And that would normally be, you know, just fine. Doesn't matter because it's a device that I plug in and I never unplug. Except that I have had a couple of times where, like, I have people over and they decide, oh, hey, there's a charging uh, cord or there's a, a brick that I, you know, I need to charge my phone. I'm going to take that and plug it in somewhere else. And then me, the owner of the home, I'm like, hey, let's watch something on the TV. Let me just cast this to well, why isn't my Chromecast on the list anymore, you know? And then I go and I look at it, and it's not plugged in, and I'm like, who did this? So what's amazing to me is that you have all these cords exposed to where people could see the, them. Yeah, so the the uh, TV stand that we have is rather minimalist, right? And so you can see right through it to behind the TV, and so the uh, the power strip is just on the floor, like, slightly behind that, and so people can see that. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um and so that's yeah, I mean obviously like it's not Google's fault that my my friends are dumb and did that. But 
<laughs> I just need to train my house guests better to a like little, not steal my cords. It's a, it's, a, it's a terms of service you sign when you walk in. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you may have access to my Wi-Fi network if you promise. Yes. One of the the wonder wonderful things that I have on this Chromecast that was not available on my previous streaming device, which is the Nexus Player, mm. uh, is I can actually control the volume of the media that's on my television with my phone mm -hmm. instead of like instead of having to reach for the remote for the television. Oh, it's so hard to reach for my remote. It is. Oh. And actually what you said about CEC not being able to turn off the television, like now I really want that because whatever oh, I've I really done, want that too. I have to reach for the remote which, for my television. Which brings me to the next point here. It'd be nice if CEC also supported actual audio control too, mm -hmm. um, because what what the Chromecast implementation is mm -hmm. for audio control is not it's not the volume of the TV, no, it's the volume of the media playback. Right. So it's kind of like when you um, change the volume on your computer speakers versus the changing the Windows volume, changing the uh, versus changing the right. YouTube volume. Right, right, right. How many volumes can you change before it sucks? Exactly. Um, and I've actually kind of had to retrain my housemates uh, on, you know, the what they should be using to change the volume initially because everybody reaches for the, the, the TV remote first, right? And then they turn that like way, way down. And then when I come and I start casting and I'm on like the, the other side of the room from the remote, I'm like, I don't. Like, I can't, my Chromecast can't go any louder than this, but it's not yeah. loud enough yet, right? So my solution for that was to buy three extra remotes and um, <laughs> just have one in each sitting area. You know, I, I'm thinking, because I've seen that, like, the Google Home supports, like, Harmony, I think, is, is oh, that's interesting. this smart remote thing oh. that, you know, it, it is a phys – physically, it has an IR blaster that just, you know – the Google Home does? No, no, no. Oh, like the, the Harmony. Okay. Yeah. And that, but then the Google Home can so interface with the, the Harmony. the remote in front of the TV. Something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know exactly where you're supposed to place it. That'd but be cool. I'm, I'm fascinated by the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's another feature with the, the, the Chromecast these days. And the original Chromecast had this too. It's kind of this, mm -hmm. this wallpaper thing yeah. that goes on. Yeah. And they actually have a name for it because calling it a wallpaper it's too hard after having <laughs> 25 years of convention. So let's call it a backdrop. I mean, it's it's almost more of like a screensaver than a wallpaper, though. Sure, why not? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So so the backdrop is basically like what the Chromecast will display when it's not doing anything else. We right? call that when idle. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, and so there, you have a lot of different options for the backdrop. Like, I think by default, it'll show you a lot of kind of... Um, broad appeal, like cool nature yeah. photographs, some artwork. Yeah, artwork. Um, locations like, like right, Google, picture, Google locations. Earth, like kind yeah. of yeah, photography. Um, stuff from like news articles and then that some are like popular photographers. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty broad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they actually, I think they they draw a little bit from like the Flickr community from the five hundred pics yes. from Google Plus. And they also and used to draw <laughs> back in the old days. Google Plus. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think they still do draw some stuff from Google Plus, actually. Well, it's just but, that one guy now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you also have the options of, like, setting up your own um, accounts that where you may have photos, right? So we've got Google Photos, of course, their first-party option. Um, you can set up your Facebook account, Flickr account. Um, those are the ones that I'm aware of that uh, you know that you may have your own photos uploaded to, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and unlike the Nexus Player, uh, I actually like those are all supported like you know out of the box kind of thing. Um, with the Nexus Player, I had to jump through a few hoops to like set up those using right. a, a, a third party app and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they work pretty darn well. Um, I, of course, I, I didn't want like my entire Google Photos right. library, so I went and chose like album by album which yeah. ones I wanted, which means that I do have to remember like going forward, stuff. yeah, to add new stuff to it. Yeah, actually, I think that's probably the best idea though. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just too risky otherwise. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you know all all those terrible, terrible screenshots that I've taken, right? They might pop up or something. I, I know, don't know. exactly. <laughs> I mean, that it is true. Like, those screenshots, nobody's going to want to see them, but it's not like, you know, there's anything crazy. I take a lot of screenshots for work, and I just can't have them floating around all my Chromecasts. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, on my, my opinion on this is, why would you ever change it from the default, you crazy person? Because, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to go and buy one of those... Uh, 
silly like um picture frames that like looks like a regular picture frame that sits up on a bookshelf you know but like cycles through a series of digital photos like that's exactly what i would do no, when i buy a chromecast no 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 no, no. i just no. my i've got this giant screen in the middle of the room that like could be showing my own photos i Why don't not? i don't i don't okay i just have dog pictures so it doesn't matter to me yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, turns out a lot of my pictures are like pictures that I took while I was working at camp oh. because I was the program director yeah. and like part of my job was like managing our Facebook yep. presence, you know. And uh, and so like my friends have a few times gone like, "Why do you have pictures of a bunch of random Cub Scouts up on your television?" I'm like, "It's fine. They sign their waivers. <laughs> <laughs> they sign the media. That's all form. that matters." <laughs> So there's this great feature uh, through the Chromecast uh, app and and kind of just the Google ecosystem mm -hmm. that it tells you when something is being Chromecast while on your network. Right. Great yeah. feature. Tell uh, me more. So this feature, the, the reason that they built it was because um, occasionally you might have somebody who like starts casting something to your television, right? And then they like either leave the house or they like lose the connection to the Wi-Fi network or something like that, right? Um, and so that that notification is there to allow the person who's left in the room to always be able to like stop that that cast whether they were the one who started it or not right right unfortunately um it's very hard to train people on how that is supposed to work and so what usually happens is somebody will come over to my house and they'll have an Android device, but they have never seen a Chromecast before, right? And uh, and they see this notification, and they end up just like, you know, by reflex, like pushing the stop button because they're like, "I'm not playing anything. My phone's not supposed to be playing anything." And so they they stop my stream, and I'm like, "Ah, why'd you do that?" Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually can be. Um, really really bad when i have like an entire queue set up of like you know youtube videos and then that entire queue is gone and i have no way of getting it back um yeah so so i've i've turned off that that feature thankfully it is an optional thing uh i've turned off that feature for my chromecast um so now if, if there's a rogue cast going on and you want to stop it you have to go into the google home app uh and uh you know click on that device and then tell it to stop. I have also stopped that notification because it's evil. Yeah. Uh, it's probably the worst feature they've ever added without ever trying to test it in real life. Yeah. Yeah. It makes no sense. It's and it it is kind of a challenging thing of like how how do you uh establish like the social norms around a new thing like this, right? Especially where the the interface for controlling it might not just be in the hands of the person who is supposed to be controlling it right but mm -hmm. can be controlled by anybody on the network right right i agree but this wasn't the way to do it yeah yeah and this goes into like kind of the the wider you know issue of any time that you have somebody in your house who's like on your network right they'll be able to cast stuff to your television uh, they'll be able to cast stuff to any of the televisions in your house, right? If you have, if you happen to have multiple ones, um, like I, we have, we have a Chromecast hooked up to our television in the living room. Uh, my housemate has a big old television in his in his bedroom, right? And so he has mm -hmm. a Chromecast on it. I've noticed that that is not on the list quite often. So I think he literally like unplugs it when he's not using it, so that we can't just like cast stuff mm, sure. to his television. Um, and I, I would like to think that the rest of us are reasonable people and wouldn't go trolling him like that. But you So know. that's actually a thing that I've often wanted. So I have a lot of Chromecasts. Mm -hmm. And it would be great to have a way in the Google Home app. Mm -hmm. Home app, whatever. Um, that, that is the app that you use, yes. Yeah, but it sounds weird because there's a Google Home product and an app right. and a thing. Um, but it would be great if you could go into the app and then configure which ones you could see. Okay. Oh, okay. It's like on an account by account basis. Right. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. So like, I don't need to see my mom, so I'm never going to use it. I don't care. Right. Perfect. Yeah. And they, they do take that into account a little bit for like the Google homes, you know? So like mm -hmm. you can, you can set, if you have a Google home that's in your living room and you have a living room television, right? You can tell that Google home, whenever I tell you to play something, 
just default to this television, right? Right. And of course, you can't tell it out loud that you have to go into the app to like set that preference. <laughs> but then from then on, <laughs> whenever you tell it to play something, uh, it knows where to go. In terms of uh, connectivity for this device, it supports both uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So that's nice. Um, I don't know. It's very good. I don't know what what letters you know of of N B something something. What are the, how does Wi Fi work? I don't N. know. There's uh, you can get an Ethernet adapter for it apparently. Apparently, that's don't, don't actually bother. That's crazy talk. It is. Yeah, especially since I mean, it's a Chromecast that's maxing out at 1080p. Right. Right. Maybe maybe, maybe the Ultra you might want that, but Wait, for sure the Ultra you want that. But doesn't it come with the built-in Ethernet? Mm-mm. Oh, well, I believe it only came with. Uh... So, for example, maybe you live in an apartment and you have five hundred other access points nearby you. Okay. Maybe you need to have mm-hmm. uh, an Ethernet cable sure. to do your stuff. Um, so the five gigahertz thing was a big deal when these came out mm-hmm. because it enabled people to put them on a segmented network. Right. So that way. Ah. Um. So the Chromecasts are pretty much stationary, and 5 gigahertz actually prefers being stationary. Right. And uh, you can just have a way higher throughput, so you'll get less, you know, disruptions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I suppose, like, if, if you wanted to get clever with, like, you know, a, a router that can uh, have, you know, a simultaneous, like, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz that are, are, like, separate, you know, then you could have... Uh, essentially, like, your guest network be one of them and, like, your real one be another one and, so, you know, separate stuff out that way or something. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. Okay, yeah. I have three three of them. Huh. Yeah. One is basically dedicated to any stationary media playback device. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my, my stuff, like, the... Uh, the Google Wi-Fi at my house just, like, automatically configures all of that. It You know, it kind of shuffles different devices around to two, yeah. 2.4 or 5 gigahertz depending mm-hmm. on you know cases that's what you got to do yep, yep and then of course yeah you just man this price 35 bucks can't um, beat it it's so great yeah this is like that is honestly the type of thing that changes society is not <laughs> like it's not like when the the technology for this kind of thing first comes out it's when it becomes cheap you know basically so so this is this is really like this is it <laughs> pretty much um like i i have a, a television that i bought that you know came with a bunch of like smart television features on it right i didn't look twice at them i don't care uh because i knew that like Vizio probably isn't going to be keeping up on top of that. You know, they're not going to be like updating those. Mm-hmm. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to be pursuing all of the partnerships going forward in years to come. Yep. Um, however, with the Chromecast, I know that like this device lives or dies by how well Google supports it in the future, right? And so Google is going to support it in the future. And if they don't, I will get rid of it. Right. Yep. Um, whereas, like with the television, I can't just get rid of the television and get a different one that has a better smart right, TV. Right. Because it costs too much. Set up. Yeah. Um, so, so this is this is my way of like kind of separating out the the display device from all of the like the playback, the media, yep. all of that. <laughs> um, and so, so yeah. So like the the Chromecast, I think is a really really good option for like a streaming stick kind of thing right because it's so cheap um it has most of the like most of the partnerships that you could ask for right um the the major exception being like amazon of course right um and anything that apple does of course Mm. uh, they're never gonna you know support google stuff um but but the reason that I'm okay with the Chromecast not being able to do every single thing that it that I need is because I know that there aren't any streaming devices that can do every single thing that I need, right? At this point in history, I definitely still need a Windows PC plugged into my television in order to support all of the things that I could possibly want to put up on my television. Right. Um, Cause that's the one platform that I guarantee you is going to be supported by everybody. Yep. So pretty much. Yep. Yeah. There are a few 
cons here uh, for the for the Chromecast um, second gen. Of course, it only uses HDMI, which is it's fine. It, it, yeah, it's it's not really an issue for televisions. You know, if if you wanted to have this thing plugged into something that isn't a television, you might run into a you know situation where you would need uh, HDMI, but you don't what have. What would that be? I don't know. One of these monitors, maybe. All like, of them have HDMI. Do they? Okay. Well, you know, you might run into a monitor that doesn't. Well, that's it's a crappy unli- monitor. It's then. unlikely, but you know, it's possible. Yeah, we we mentioned that uh, you know if you if a service that you want to use doesn't use Google Cast, you're out of luck. So. You can mirror, but it's going to be bad. Yep. Yep. Um, so I, I've had some, um, sometimes they get disconnected Mm -hmm. and you can, uh, reconnect by just going back to the app that you started it from and hitting the little Chromecast button and Mm -hmm. it'll figure out, you know, who it is again and work again. About 95% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's still a little flaky. Um, my problem is a little bit weirder though. Sometimes they just get lost on the network. Okay. So frequently I will be able to see living room. Mm Mm-hmm. Telling me connected to Pi. That's my lovely uh, Wi-Fi network. Right. But then when I go to Chromecast to it, it's not there. Hmm. Yeah. It says it's connected. But it's not there. I have noticed that a couple of times recently, where like none of my individual devices are listed, but I'll still be able to see like the the Chromecast audio groups that I've created. Sure. It's very strange, and I I wasn't able to figure out exactly what was going on. Because mm-hmm. um, then I would go into like the the Google Home app and look, and there's all of my individual devices like listed, but they're not listed when I'm trying to Chromecast. It was very strange. Yeah, I don't know. Like there's some there's some weirdness that goes on with how the devices are queried on the network. Mm-hmm. Because I will see that some of the devices are there as soon as I hit the button. And if I wait longer, even more will show up. Right, so right. It's wonderful. <laughs> so, and then besides backdrop, which mm-hmm. lets you change the wallpaper, yeah, there's remarkably little customization you can do to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's kind of a shame because it seems like there's this this great opportunity, especially on this uh, kind of like desktop kind of you know idled screen. Sure. For all sorts of stuff to be there, and there's just nothing. What, there. what kind of stuff do you have in mind? It could show me my tweets. It could show me your tweets. (laughs) It could show me not only the weather, but different world clocks. It could Mm -hmm. show me stock stuff. It could show me um, some news clips, I guess. It could spam me like Chrome. There's opportunity to do something more than just be idle. It could become just like live television where like whatever is currently on is on. It's kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't. That's weird. Either somebody at Google would be curating stuff, right? Or, or you know, it could be well, so it's a little bit hard because Chromecast is in such a multi, you know, multi-person environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you mm-hmm. can even have it so like uh, Apple has this concept of extensions, and it's basically just like uh, you know Android apps exposing another service another app can use. Okay. Um, but if you installed an app on your phone, you could tell that you could tell your Google Home app to use this service to go do something to the Chromecast on the TV. Sure. There okay. could be a mechanism, but mm-hmm. there just isn't. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's a technical limitation or if they just don't want to do all that work. I don't know. Both. I was just thinking about the Google Home's My Day feature, you know, has mm-hmm. like, the, they have a lot of podcasts in their repository there that are like updated like once every half hour or whatever mm-hmm. kind of thing. They, I wonder if there are any video format, mm. you know, news outlets that, are, you know, update on a regular basis frequently, Probably that not. kind of thing. A lot more work. Yeah, I, don't, I, but I mean, like we as a human species have, uh, we we figured out the twenty four hour Man, ca- there's cable a lot of net- us doing that. cable network. Uh, the whole species have figured out how to yeah. do it. <laughs> so, like you know, you'd think that there would be some content to that you could put up on a Chromecast. Too hopeful at any time. Yeah. So, Ryan, you had the first-gen Chromecast, the Chrome Stick. Sure uh, do. I have multiple of them still. Before, Okay, yeah. Um, how does the this new one, the second-gen, compare to the first-gen? So, we're, we're kind of like mid-life cycle of this product, I'm sure. thinking. Either mid-life cycle or near the end. I mean, there's got to be a new one coming out any month now. Um, Google I.O.'s coming up. Hey, well, we don't know that yet. <laughs> okay, but it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so compared to the first-generation it's uh, already better with connectivity on Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So 5 gigahertz makes a huge difference mm-hmm. for smooth playback. Plugging it in is easier because 
uh, instead of being a stick, right? Uh, it's now um, kind of like a ribbon cable HDMI. Yeah. Um, that you plug in, and then it kind of can be further away and not so close to the actual body of the TV. Yeah, because you never know exactly what the shape of that like yeah. HDMI connection area is going to be. Right. You never know if it's going to be vertical or horizontal or yeah, 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 weird or ninety degree angle or Gosh, something. You just, know, it's insane. What? Um, it's marginally faster. Mm-hmm. Um, at for example, when you have to launch Netflix or YouTube, marginally faster, not right. significantly faster. I, you know, I haven't noticed any times where the Chromecast wasn't already playing by the time my television turned itself on via CEC. Sure. You know? Yeah. 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 So it's I, because the TVs are just notoriously slow these days. Sure. Um, Which is weird to me. Like, what's making them slow? I don't know. Bad, understand. bad, just bad. Yeah. Um, I have heard, though, that the Chromecast Ultra is significantly faster mm. at launching things. Yeah. Um, and that's because it's beefy GPU or CPU or 4K playing something or another. Sure is really powerful compared to what it's being asked to do. Yeah. And so we can get it done. That beefy seventy dollar yeah. <laughs> device. Yeah, yeah. Um and and so I think uh maybe we'll see some more power in some of these devices mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. I have a couple of uh notes about how this compares to the experience of using Android TV. Because yes. uh, I, I came from not a Chromecast, but I came from the Nexus player. Nah. Um by the way, if you want to listen to our review of of the nexus player long after its life ended uh we had uh back in september a second opinion post-mortem about that device so the i'd say the biggest difference here is that like the chromecast doesn't have a remote and so you know if, if you're not used to this whole like interface of using your phone to find a thing and then putting that up on the television. Uh, you're not going to like the Chromecast as much. Um, I really, really like that more than having a physical remote. Cause like, I don't want to have to go and hunt that down in the room. And if it, you know, disappears, then we're out of luck and you know, um, so, so yeah, so I, I really, really like the, the whole concept of, of, casting stuff from one device to the big device yeah so i'm mr skeptical yeah you are no on-screen interface and no remote how mm-hmm. could you so instead here's what you have to do you have to stare and touch this glass bar of soap that's slippery <laughs> and cold and maybe even slimy i don't know and then sure but ryan that's the the slippery bar of glass soap that i have chosen to stare at for the rest of my day anyway i thought you were gonna say life but okay um and then you can't even use it in the dark because you're going to get blinded by this horrible thing. I'd stare at my phone in the dark anyway. Um, and you can't use it under a blanket because you have to see the screen, which is absurd because you could have just memorized seven buttons, you know, the little <laughs> D-pad direction, enter, maybe back, and maybe menu. Seven mm-hmm. buttons. And then, like, it just doesn't make sense. It's just... Just it's just senseless. Ryan, I can control my Chromecast's playback from my wrist because my watch is connected to my phone, which is the thing that's controlling my Chromecast. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> so maybe this was an artifact of five years ago when the original product launched. Mm-hmm. So Google didn't have a TV solution back then. They had Google, <laughs> they had they had Google TV, which yeah. is a joke. Yeah. Android TV came out a couple years later. Mm-hmm. Android TV is significantly better because it has the on-screen interface, but it also has Chromecast support. Right. You get the best of both. Yeah. Uh, if In you, theory. Well, it's Google, so, I mean, of course, it's not actually the best of both. It's the best of neither. Right. Um, but that's where it should really be. Like, there's no reason these devices need to be passive. They mm-hmm. could have provided a remote with it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the next one comes with a remote, very similar to the Fire Stick, and then you can ca- cast to it if you want. The remote is so good on the Fire Stick. I wouldn't like that. We should do a review on the Fire Stick. I will tell you how I... good that product is. <laughs> it is so good. Yeah, the uh so the Chromecast experience on the uh the Chromecast itself is a lot better than the Chromecast experience on the Nexus player was. That's because they didn't know they were making the Chromecast a thing when they made the Nexus player, which is funny because it came out like two years later. E- was it? I feel like, wait, I don't remember exactly when the Nexus player came out. Yeah, they, but, they dropped the ball on that one. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, there, there were a couple of things like uh, Netflix would um, 
not only start like a, a a cast of whatever I told it to cast, but it would like open the Android TV yeah. app yeah. for Netflix, and then it would prompt me like asking me who was you are. Yeah, who's who's watching? Which which um, which person? Which profile, profile is it? Yeah, yeah. and uh, and that was always silly because then I'd have to reach for the remote, which wasn't in my hand already. Just use the bloody remote; it's um, there for a reason. It also like you know, it, I I wouldn't be able to command the Google Home to start a stream of Netflix onto the Nexus Player because what, however, the Chromecast solution was built into the Google Home was assuming. That it was a, an actual Chromecast yeah. device and not like an Android TV device. Yeah, no, I I, I know there are some really rough spots here, mm-hmm. but this is the future that we need. We cannot lose the remote. <laughs> the remote is the key. I hate the remote. Ugh. Um, the Chromecast devices don't even pretend to do gaming, right? On uh, on Android TV, that was kind of a thing that you could do if you wanted but don't do it i don't use the remote for such a useless endeavor oh no i mean if you were going to be doing gaming on the uh, android tv you would get uh, a controller right yeah um hopefully and of course there was you know the nvidia shield android tv device you know was actually kind of meant for gaming um so but yeah like on on the chromecast uh i can't imagine what kind of gaming uh thing you would ever do actually you know what i did cast like I mirrored my my phone up to the TV while I was playing Monument Valley Two one time, <laughs> and that didn't go very well because the audio was kind of distorted. So or like it was like crackly, you know? Yeah, like yeah, that's so, funny. So that wasn't good. Um, Android TV can do some clever things, like you know, it can serve as a Plex server, right? Don't bother. Chrome, credit Chromecasts can't do that. Yeah, they're they're only receiving yeah devices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you can cast from Plex to Chromecast, so that's fine. Yep. Yep. And yeah, like just like the fact that the that the Chromecast is like a supported device kind of makes all the difference in the world, really. Pretty much at this point, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hope we get a new one that has a remote. I don't. I, I'm I'm perfectly fine with the one that we have. I need a one. I, I need one with a remote. <laughs> just like, call it. Just just so like they can simplify their lineup too. So just raise the price to fifty dollars. Get rid of the Ultra. Make the no, ultra... don't raise the price. No, it's good. It's fine. It's, it's fine. No, no, no. no, no. I need it cheap. It, I need be, it super it'll cheap. It'll be the exact same price as the Google Home Mini, which actually does less. Just, just do it. It's fine. No, it's so, the, the Chromecast is such a perfect device. Fifty dollars. Give it a remote. Make it have all of the Chromecast Ultra features, and give it a remote. I'm totally fine with them having a more expensive version and a less expensive version because that means that I can feel good about buying the less expensive version since I don't have a 4K television, you know? It doesn't matter. You don't need a 4K TV to enjoy the higher speed and the remote. But I don't notice the difference in speed because my TV doesn't turn on by the time it, it you know, the Chromecast well, is already playing. When you get a faster TV, <laughs> you're going to really notice. <laughs> yeah, that's years down the road. This TV is going to last me for like 20 well, years. Well, then it's good. You'll get to the... Second version of the Chromecast with the second gen remote. Sure. Okay. <laughs> and we'll redo a review on that one. And then. what are we going to be calling Google Cast by that time, I wonder? Uh, it'll be called Alphabet Soup. <laughs> oh, man. So, Ryan, <laughs> if people want to watch you on the uh, TV, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, well, you can find me just about anywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryanmar, which you cannot watch on the Chromecast <laughs> for some reason. No. Um, and also my website, RyanRapperSud.com. Fantastic. And my name is Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck, or you can find links to other stuff that I make at ianrbuck.com. This has been Second Opinion, our reviews show. So if you have any feedback about this episode, or if you have suggestions for other stuff that you want us to review, uh, maybe you have bought something that you want to come on as a guest to review for us, uh, we would love to talk to you. So you can get in touch with us on Twitter at The Nexus TV. Or uh, you can send us an email at thenexustv at gmail.com. If you want to use any part of this episode, feel free to, because this show is released under a Creative Commons attribution license. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good one.